We got some new commanders, and they are actually pretty good for CDH as well. They all have the keyword friends forever. You may have two commanders if both are friends forever. So they are basically partners, but not partners. So welcome to the CDH Stranger Things card review. What makes partners really, really strong is that you get access to so many color identities while you might focus on one specific commander. For example, Mike the Dungeon Master, together with 11, which means you get all five colors while you're mostly focused around Mike's ability potentially. Lore-wise, this might be one of the better mixes you can have, but don't worry, we're not gonna cover that much lore inside this YouTube video, because it's not really what this channel is doing, even though I really do like Stranger Things personally. Let's begin with looking at them one by one and making a small review. So first up we have Chief Yim Hopper. Hopper, I don't give me, I don't know exactly how I should pronounce this guy, but he's a 4 mana cost Boros legendary guy, 4-4 four, four human soldier, I think soldier fits perfectly, even though police, uh, soldier is perfect, menace, whenever Chief Yim Hopper attacks, investigate once for each non tooking attacking creature, and then yes, friends forever, so he's basically creating a lot of card draw, I actually think Yim is quite strong, let's compare him to Frasius, Blue, green, one, free, pay, four, scry, one, reveal, and potentially put it into your hand on land into play. While Jim is gonna be two mana, draw a card. And if you're attacking with a lot of creatures, then you get a lot of clues, so you can really pump mana into him for card draw. Then we have 11. Grixis colors, four mana for a free five human wizard. Your maximum hand size is 11. I think that's quite spot on to what she's doing. Whenever 11 the mage attacks, you draw a card and you lose one life. Then if you have 11 or more cards in your hand, you may cast an instant of sorcery spell from your hand without paying its mana cost. Compared to how strong she is in the TV series where she's just OP, she is quite decent here. A 4 mana cost attack creature that draws a card and loses a life is quite mediocre. It's playable, but it's really weak in general. However, if you're able to cast an instant sorcery without paying its mana cost by attacking with this, you can cast your Peer into the Abyss, your Adnos, your Muddle, big cool things. But the problem is that it requires a setup. You need to have 11 cards in your hand. And that isn't something you're always guaranteed to have. You can never really build around her. She's primarily going to be color identities and a really expensive card drawing commander that sometimes gets there with a really big hand size and costs an ad nose appear into the abyss. And that could be really good, but it happens when it happens. But you could kind of work for it. For example, you could team up with your best friend, Jim Hopper, who is kind of like a stepdad for her in the story, so to say, and he can investigate to basically pay two mana to draw a card, so he could work there, fill your hand size with value, counter spells, then 11 attacks, and you cost your peer, you probably attack with uh, Jim Hooper as well, but you're attacking with her, you're costing your peer, and then you have a huge hand size with a lot of counter spells to protect your peer or your Adnos or whatever cool spell you're actually casting. And with this, you're basically playing four colors with everything but green, so you're gonna be able to build a really good deck. The same colors as Blue Farm. Next card is Dustin Gadget Genius, and I'm really sad that. Like, my favorite character in the story isn't actually here, but it's Dustin's best friend. It's the, it's the guy that gets Nancy and then breaks up with Nancy. I would like to point out that it's actually he who's breaking up with her, not the other way around. <laughs> However, I promise no lore in this YouTube channel. I'm really sorry, guys. He is a 4 mana cost, blue, white, 2, 3, he's just human. Mm, artificer, maybe, whatever. Tap, add... Two colorless three mana, spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. Overall, he's not that great. He could pair up with, for example, Jim, as he's making a lot of clues. Then he can tap and sacrifice those clues to draw cards. But a four CMC mana dork commander, nah, not that great. Next, we have Lucas, the sharpshooter. And I think he might be the weakest of the bunch, even though his mana cost is pretty appealing blue red one free human sacrifice an artifact lucas the sharpshooter deals one damage to target creature gold 
that creature. Goading creature is usable in CDH, but it's not something you really want to do as a main thing. It's usually something you have on a card as a like, tiny bonus effect, and you have to sacrifice an artifact. On the other hand, a lot of these Friends Forever characters are really good at creating clues, so he should have a lot of ammunition, so to say. So you're probably primarily going to pick him up as a commander for color identity, but there's probably gonna be better options for other call identities within the friends group, so I don't think this guy, even though he's quite cool, isn't gonna see that much play in CDH at all. But his girlfriend, Max the Daredevil, is actually looking pretty interesting. Green, red, 2-3 human with haste. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, untap target creature, then investigate. So this commander actually already exists. Yorian Ruin Diver. You don't need to pay any mana, you just get the Kadra immediately. While with Max, you have to pay the two to sacrifice the clue to gain the Kadra. But with Max, you get access to more colors as she has friends forever, so you can build a more diversified deck. I actually think that Max has some potential. If we take a look at, for example, Nimris and Rashmi, two commanders that are really good at playing the control card drawing grindy game plan but they are lacking one big thing color identities they can't really branch out and make their decks diversified only having access to two colors is limiting these two but with max you could pair up with something that is going to give you like up to four colors for example instead of pairing up 11 with jim you could pair up with max instead of gaining white you gain green so now you have a four color deck with a lot of clue production from Max and a big color identity from Eleven, basically playing all four colors but white. Then we have Will the Wise, Ors of White, Black, two mana cost, one, two. When Will the Wise enters or leaves the battlefield, each opponent may investigate, each opponent who doesn't lose one life. You investigate X times, where X is the number one plus the number of opponents who investigated this way. Personally, I don't like group hug in CDH. I don't like when you're giving value to someone else, even though you're gaining a little bit more value for yourself. It's like, oh, I'm giving you something, but I'm gaining more. But in the end, like, why would you give something to someone, even though it's a little benefit and you're giving a bigger benefit, you could play a better commander that is only giving you benefit. Let's just compare Will and Jim here straight up. In a well-built Jim deck, you're going to probably investigate as much as you would with a simple will. Without group hugging, helping anyone else but yourself. So in my opinion, don't play will. He's not that great for CDH, in my personal opinion. Then we have Mike, the dungeon master, who is actually almost the hero or something of the hero guy inside his story. He is green, white, Celestia, 2-2, two, two, human. For two mana, tap him, Choose target creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to the battlefield tapped. He goes infinite with the two cards that he is actually gaining access to with his color identities, Village Bell Ringer and Great Oak Guardian. And of course you do need a sack outlet and a few mana dorks that is going to be able to pay the mana to basically activate his ability. What you're doing is that you're casting one of these two, you're untapping all of your mana dorks that you use to cast them, then you use your whatever sack outlet to send these to the graveyard, and you activate Mike, and you return them into play tapped, but they're gonna untap everything, including Mike and your mana dorks, and if you're using Great Oak Guardian, all of your creatures will gain infinite infinite, and you should gain infinite mana this way, and you could probably gain infinite mana with Village Bell Ringer as well. So he's something of a combo piece in the command zone as he can use this little combo trick, but he's also some form of value engine as you could sacrifice things and re-enter them during the gameplay. This combo actually already exists with Kenrith the Return King, a 5 mana cost commander with a black 5 mana ability to reanimate something, and he has actually access to more combo options as he doesn't need a creature that untaps everything he just needs a creature that produces six mana or more like a dockside extortionist dockside extortionist doesn't work with mike the dungeon master unless you have intruder alarm that untaps everything whenever a creature comes into play and kenriff also has more possible actions as he could draw a card gain life give haste put plus on plus on counters on creatures 
while Mike can only reanimate creature that died this turn. The obvious pairing for Mike is 11 as that's his girlfriend, as you're gaining all 5 color identities, and which means that this is the first time we have a 2 pair commander with access to all 5 colors. However, I still think that Kenriff is gonna perform better, you have all 5 colors with Kenriff, and you have better abilities overall. I do think that Eleven has some cool things going for her, but I do think Kenriff is outmatching these two, my personal opinion. Then last and finally, we have the 7 mana mono black legendary enchanted creature horror Mind Flayer the Shadow on 9-9. Mind Flayer the Shadow isn't a creature unless you control 3 or more permanents you don't own. And at the beginning of your end step, exile the bottom card of each opponent's library face down for as long as those cards remain exiled you may look at them you may cast permanent spells from among them and you may spend mana as though there were mana any any color to cast those spells this is way too expensive for a monocolored commander and it's not that good i mean you have better commanders that are doing the exact same thing as mind flayer for a cheaper mana cost and better color I or more color identities. Just play Paco or T-Bot instead, they're gonna do the exact same thing but better. As a final wrap up for this video, I think that the personal favorite, the pairing that I think is gonna be the strongest that people might actually try and play with, is gonna be Eleven the Mage and Chief Jim Hopper. I think this is gonna give you an amazing card drawing ability from Jim, basically being the main card drawing engine and then just having Eleven as a card you cast when you don't have anything better to do she's basically not gonna be there for color identities with your really odd nasty peering to the beast deck but i also think that 11 and the max have some amazing cdh capabilities card drawing for only two cmc whenever you cast two spells per turn that could easily be achieved i think you could create something about two clues each turn cycle depending on the deck might need some play testing i think jim is a more secured definitely gonna work max should work and then you have your 11 creature that's hanging in the command zone that you call so you don't have anything better to do giving you a lot of color identities and if you're able to climb to that 11 hand size you're gonna be really scary truly some really exciting stuff the only thing i'm a little bit bummed up with is that they didn't make a card for that guy these two are basically my favorites in the series. Would it be really cool to play something with these two? But hey, you get what you get. Take care, guys. I'll see you around. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.